Hello, everyone. Gary Laubach, Mike Joseph. We are behind the mic. Mike is also inside the huddle this week. Make sure you take a look at that. It's the University of Pennsylvania coming to town. A 3.30 start at Fisher Stadium. Penn now finds themselves 1-0. Been a long time since they played football, 672 days since their last win, uh, as the Ivy League did not play any spring ball, did not play football last year at all. They did win against Bucknell on Saturday, 30-6. to Always tough, a, a program that's been around for 144 years. Ray Priori's been there forever, I think 34 years total, six years as the head coach. Uh, there'll be no surprises this week, but they're going to be tough. Yeah, they are, and they're going to come in here and want to run the football, establish mm -hmm. the run. Uh, you know, it's a team that's always seasoned. You know, Even though they didn't play last year, uh, it's a team that picks up where they left off. A lot of seniors, a lot of graduate students, a lot of kids that have played a lot of football for Ray, uh, and I'm sure he's happy about the way his front seven defensively and his front seven offensively are really panning out. They are loaded with skill position people. As Mike pointed out, a number of fifth-year seniors on this football team. They racked up almost 500 yards of offense against Bucknell, and they split it evenly, kind of. Uh, so that presents defensive problems. Yeah, if you think about their uh, their offense, they've always come off the run, the play action, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. But they've got to establish the run. Um, and against a good, probably a good Bucknell defense. Bucknell always puts together a good defense, a tough scheme to go against. Uh, Bucknell doesn't allow you really to run the football, so it's kind of uh, amazing that they ran the ball for over 200 and some yards. Um, so that's a little scary. Lafayette's defense is, is going to have to come up and stop the run number one, make them become one-dimensional, because if they have any uh, possible lull, it's going to be at the quarterback position. An older kid, but hasn't played a lot of football here. Absolutely true, and he did have a good first game to John Quinelli. Quinelli, 15 for 22 for 273 yards. Great receivers in Ryan Cragen and Rory Starkey. Both of them scored touchdowns, both of them over 100 yards receiving. Yeah, and, and you see what we had a, a little bit of a problem last week with uh, Quinn, uh, Gwinnett, uh, you know, Espinette, uh, Espinette and Edwards. Uh, so they're probably looking at the New Hampshire film saying, listen, if we run the football, we establish any sort of run, we should be able to get it down the field and play action, roll out, do some of those things. But like you said, Craig, and uh, wonderful wide receiver, mm -hmm. uh, and then Malcolm in the backfield. You know, those are the type of things. I mean, if you're going to hone in, you've got to take away those things and then make them do something they don't want to do. And the other thing is if Lafayette can get some pressure on the quarterback, which I thought they did this past week, mm -hmm. but they had to bring an extra guy, whether it was Billy Schaefer, whether it was uh, uh, Marco Olivas coming off the corner, or whether it was Jair Stevens. They always seem to have to add an extra guy. So I'm putting a little bit of pressure on uh, Malik Cam and his friends up front. They got to be able to bring the pressure with four and then be able to play coverage is going to be very important. The running back, Isaiah Malcolm, is one of those guys that's kind of hard to find in the backfield. He's only 5'5", five, five, but not only does he run the ball very well, he had 80-some yards on Saturday, but he also catches the ball well out of the backfield. As they drop the ball off to him, he had three catches on Saturday, so he will be a force. They might even be stronger on the defensive side of the football. Prince Amelie, Jake Heimlicher, Micah Morris have all been around a long time. There's probably no better player in the, in the Ivy League than Prince Amelie. Yeah, and, and they're going to put pressure on you. They're going to make you move their big guys out of the way, and they're going to let guys like O'Neal in the middle run sideline mm -hmm. to sideline. So um, they always have good secondary guys. Got to put some pressure on, obviously, our wide receivers. Julius Young had a little bit of a quiet game, but we saw, um, you know, we saw Jordan Hull step up a little bit. We're going to have to get a little bit more out of Gilbert, that mm -hmm. type of thing. But what do you do? How do you do those type of things? And then inside the huddle, we're going to talk a little bit this week about checking the ball down, getting the ball to the backs. I think we've had a lot of success with guys like Michael Hayes. You see how quick and efficient kickoff return, 96 yards, getting the ball to Jaden Sutton, maybe even getting Najee Adams in there, getting him the ball. So those long handoffs, checking mm -hmm. the ball down, getting some one-on-ones, what I think we have some of the best running backs in the league, one-on-one -on -one with their linebackers. Take advantage of that mismatch, which I think it is a mismatch. And then if you can do that and draw those safeties and linebackers up now you get your one-on-ones with Julius Young and Jordan Hall and you can see how electric those guys can be on the outside. Now Mike even goes more in depth and inside the huddle with that kind of a game plan so take a look at that for sure. Positives for Lafayette the special teams have looked good the defense has certainly looked good and uh, and obviously Mike I think the kicking game is solid. Oh yeah look at look at Pettit Mike mm -hmm. Pettit I mean you can't ask for anything more three out of four um, you know he was solid he got us in the game he got us to a one score game even the onside kick was terrific mm -hmm. I mean they he probably should have had a shot at that. Obviously kicked it what Washington got the ball. Um, I was thinking about the last two games. Maybe put the Air Force game aside, but those are two winnable games. That was not a very good William & Mary team, in my opinion. And New Hampshire was beatable. I, I had dinner down in Easton after the game, ran into a New Hampshire fan. He said, I said, boy, you got a good quarterback. And he said, you know what? He was off today. I said, he was off today. He looked terrific to me. Um, so we're, 
I think those were winnable games. And I think uh, Coach John Garrett will tell you they were winnable games. So we're right there, get a little bit more offense, maybe get some guys back from injury. Lafayette will be right there, and a big win against Penn could start it off. The Polsters must have been impressed. They moved uh, New Hampshire up from 23 to 21 this week. So, so their win certainly did impress them. Obviously, we still have the quandary at quarterback. I'm not quite sure how we're going to solve it. I guess we probably won't know until this Saturday when we do the game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I talked to Rent Monty before the game. Obviously, has a little bit of a shoulder issue there. Whether he'll be back and healthy, we don't know. He's effective when he's in there. He's effective running the football, but with a bad shoulder, you don't know if he's going to stay in the pocket. But I was impressed with Sean Davis. I really was. I thought he did some really good things. He did uh, when he took his time and he found his receivers. When he got out of the pocket and used his leg to extend play, you can see he's not a – dual threat, run the football kind of zone read guy, but he's a guy that can can stay in the pocket, slide, create some time, get the ball down the field. The, the problem comes when he pushes the ball, when he focuses in on one side of the field, and maybe he doesn't have a full handle on the playbook yet, but week by week, day by day, Coach Garrett will feed him even more, and I like the uh, the athleticness uh, the athleticness of him, and did you see him throw that ball down yeah. the field at Jordan Hall? I mean, one step left, boom, gone 60 yards, so he has the ability within him. He is only a freshman. You have to remember that. As Mike mentioned, probably not the whole playbook in front of him yet. But he'll have a full week if indeed he becomes the starter this Saturday. That yet to be determined. We will see you, Mike and I. We'll definitely see you at 3.30 on Saturday afternoon at Fisher Stadium. Join us. This has been Behind the Mic.